Hello, <clears throat> my name is Dr. Veronica Fierro. I am an assistant professor at Rockhurst University uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, USA. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, research that uh, my team and I have done on affiliate stigma, stress, and quality of life among um, family members with children with disabilities. These are the additional authors that have contributed to this research. We have all been under the direction of Dr. Shin Ying Chu uh, at the University of Kebangsang in Malaysia. So raising a child with a disability, in particular, um, children with autism spectrum disorder and children with cerebral palsy can be overwhelming for parents and families. Um, children with these disabilities may require lifelong support and services um, to improve their ability to function at home, school, or the community. So the impact of having a child with these disabilities potentially affects parents in several ways, including increased parental stress, mental and physical health concerns, such as um, not sleeping well enough and not visiting a doctor when they're ill, feelings of isolation, and a decreased quality of life for the family. So we conducted research, um, two different studies, um, looking into the relationship between affiliate stigma, stress levels, and quality of life in parents of children with autism spectrum disorder and with children with cerebral palsy. Um, affiliate stigma, um, often refers to the internalized stigma among family members of stigmatized individuals. So um, surveys were completed by the parents uh, with children with autism spectrum disorder and parents with children with cerebral palsy. And then we also uh, conducted semi-structured interviews with some of the parents um, with children with cerebral palsy. So these were the, uh, the scales that were completed by the parents. The affiliate stigma scale uh, enables caregivers to quantify their internalized stigma across the cognitive, affective, and behavior domains. The caregiver burden inventory um, assesses a caregiver's um, burden across five domains of life. And then the care quality of life uh, scale ask caregivers to rate their current life situation across seven distinct domains. Um, and then for the parents uh, with children with cerebral palsy, they also filled out the um, gross motor functioning scale family report. This uh, scale assesses a child uh, with cerebral palsy's level of functioning such that the lower the, the score, uh, the more effectively the child functions. So these are the total mean scores for the results of the surveys. Um, ordinary least square regression was used to evaluate the effects of affiliate stigma on caregiving stress and caregiver quality of life while controlling for key demographic factors such as gender, age, education level, employment, and number of children. So based on these scores uh, from the affiliate stigma scale, um, the parents did not feel stigmatized from having a child with autism spectrum disorder or a child with cerebral palsy. In terms of the caregiver burden inventory, a total score of more than 36 indicates a high risk of caregiver burnout, um, and a score of uh, more than 26, or between 26 and 36, indicates uh, some need uh, a need of some form of respite care. So. Um, in this case, we can see that um, neither group of parents were at the point of caregiver burnout. However, they all did need some form of respite care since they all scored above the 26. Um, and parents of cerebral palsy scored higher, uh, probably closer to the stage of um, caregiver burnout than the parents of autism spectrum disorder. Um, and then in terms of the care quality of life, um, these scores indicated fair caregiving conditions. And in fact, for the parents of children with cerebral palsy, our results uh, actually contrasted previous studies which um, indicated parents of children with cerebral palsy had a poor quality of life and mental health. 
So in terms of the relationship between the affiliate stigma, stress, and quality of life, um, for parents of children with um, autism spectrum disorder, uh, affiliate stigma did not play a big part um, in terms of stress and quality of life, suggesting that these parents do not possess negative views about themselves that could affect their psychological well-being uh, when having a child with autism spectrum disorder. On the other hand, for parents with children with cerebral palsy, we did find um, that respondents with high stress had high affiliate stigma and respondents with less stress had a better quality of life. Although for the respondents with less stress, this effect was moderate. So to get a deeper understanding of the relationship between affiliate stigma, stress and quality of life among the caregivers of children with cerebral palsy, um, we conducted semi-structured interviews with 11 parents with children with cerebral palsy, and these were analyzed using a thematic analysis method. Um, the semi-structured interview questions were based on the domains included in the survey scales, and three main themes emerged from these semi-structured interviews. So in terms of the first theme, that was, it, it, it's okay for me to sacrifice my time for him, or the impact of caring for the child. So some of the respondents reported that their children require a lot of help and, and attention from them from the parents. Um, some of the parents reported they had to quit their job in order to take care of the child with uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, marital relationships were impacted in positive and negative ways. In some cases, um, blame was placed on one spouse by the other spouse. Um, but in other cases, the couples actually became closer and more appreciative of each other based on the efforts they made in caring for their child. And in caring for their children with cerebral palsy, parents indicated um, their fulfillment when they saw progress in their child due to the child's attendance in school and in therapies, as well as the efforts that the parents were making for their child. And then in terms of socializing for themselves, um, parents reported that they had very limited time um, for social activities. And in the rare instances where they were able to participate in social activities, um, the time allocation for this socialization was limited. Now, while most of the respondents reported having positive experiences as a result of taking their child with um, cerebral palsy out in the community, you know, such as receiving um, understanding and support from people they encountered in the community. Um, negative experiences were reported as well. So this was our second theme, that people treat us differently or the outgoing experiences that they had. Um, some respondents reported feeling uncomfortable based on the ways others looked at them and talked to them. Um, but with time and encouragement, parents reported feeling increased confidence in bringing their um, child out in the community. Respondents also expressed that with the, um, the emotional support that they received from extended family members and uh, cerebral palsy associations, they were able to overcome their doubts and have the opportunity to actually bond with other parents with cerebral palsy. Uh, but unfortunately, the the COVID-19 lockdown did have an impact on these parents where there was more um, difficulty and frustration because they could not get out um, and do things um, with their children. The third theme, he must die first, we can't die first, refer to uh, the future plans. Um, parents revealed um, their concerns for the uncertain future of their child with cerebral palsy. They expressed worry and fear about having to leave them alone, especially in the event that these parents um, died before their child. And some participants um, reported that they were preparing their child um, to confront real life situations, to determine um, whether their children can handle um, certain situations on their own. Um, a couple of parents stated that they tried options um, such as supernatural options or other alternatives they could think of to help their child. Um, some parents expressed, um, you know, that why should their children be discriminated? You know, so they are humans, but they need our support. So they acknowledged um, their child and the fact that they're human 
um, and need, you know, and deserve what everybody else has. Um, and then in terms of obligations in caregiving, three parents voiced um, that they felt um, it was their obligation to care for their own child. And um, and they, they relayed that when they accept this responsibility that it became more tolerable for them to do so. So now according to the family systems theory, um, the family is a whole system and is affected by the relationships between family members. So that is the relationship between one system, such as the one between siblings, can impact the entire family system. So we also conducted research looking into lived experiences um, and perceptions of adolescents who have a brother or a sister with a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. So 14 adolescents between the ages of 13 and 15 um, participated in semi-structured interviews, which were analyzed um, using thematic analysis. And these analysis um, of these interviews is yielded five themes. And so these were typically developed in siblings with, um, with siblings with autism spectrum disorder. So the first theme uh, was in the communication challenges um, that are faced by the adolescent siblings in attempting to understand and interact with their sibling with autism spectrum disorder. Um, the respondents agreed that the lack of understanding shown by their sibling with autism spectrum disorder limited their ongoing conversations, resulting in communication breakdowns. So they reported that their siblings had difficulties attending to conversations, attending, uh, understanding instructions, um, comprehending vocabulary, or maintaining a specific topic. In the second theme, I will guide him, the adolescent uh, typically developing siblings explain the various methods that they use to attempt to fix communication breakdowns and to teach and guide their siblings uh, with autism spectrum disorder. The third theme, I feel sad, emotional reactions, um, the respondents talked about the range of emotions they felt as a result of having a sibling with autism spectrum disorder. Sometimes the feelings they felt were negative, um, but they were also sometimes intermixed with positive feelings, such as acceptance and um, gratitude. The fourth theme referred to the psychological coping strategies used by the adolescent siblings. Um, when they asked how, um, when asked how they manage their uh, physical reactions, the emotional reactions that typically develop in siblings reported that they kept their feelings to themselves for the most part. And when asked about their bond with their siblings with autism spectrum disorder, um, nine out of the 14 siblings reported that um, it helped forge a closer relationship between them and their siblings with um, autism spectrum disorder. So the conclusions and implications from our research, um, all th these studies was, um, you know, that parents do not feel stigmatized from having a child with a disability. However, um, these parents do need the provision of counseling, support groups, and helper services. Um, in order to, to receive more support. Um, and then the inclusion of typically developing siblings and in rehabilitation interventions uh, would be very helpful in order to um, help these typically developing siblings um, assist their siblings in, uh, with autism spectrum disorder and to understand them better. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Um, I enjoyed talking to you today, and I certainly welcome your questions.